Welcome to my channel, Knitting for Baby. Thanks so much for watching. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to knit this little cardigan sweater, coat, or jacket. It's a unisex pattern. You can make it for boys and girls, and it's for babies between three and six months old. Now, you can easily make it smaller or bigger from zero to three months and up to nine to 12 months. Down here in the information box, I'll go ahead and leave you some information on how you can easily make it smaller or bigger, so be sure to check that out. Now, as always, if you prefer a written pattern, check out my Etsy shop. I'll leave the link to my Etsy shop in the information box and in the comments. Thank you so much for your support. Now let's get started, but don't forget to subscribe, activate the notifications bell so that YouTube can recommend my videos. And if you like this tutorial, please hit the like button. Thanks so much for watching. Okay, to begin and knit this little sweater, I'll be using these three millimeter knitting needles. These are circular needles, but you can also use straight needles. Now, this is the yarn that I'm using. This is a number three yarn. Now, we are going to have some color variation, and that's because the yarn is like this. Now, this is the brand of yarn that I'm using. Like I said, it's a number three yarn, but you can also use DK weight or a ply. The first thing that we need to do is we need to cast on our stitches. Now, I'm going to show you how to cast on your stitches using the long tail cast. On. So to do this, we first need to measure the yarn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the yarn around like this, both needles, 20 times. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now I have enough yarn here for about 20 stitches. We're going to cast on a total of 64 stitches. So we're going to double it up like this. That's enough for 40 and double it up again, enough for 60. And I'm going to double it up again so that I have enough for about 80 stitches. We're not going to cast on 80 stitches, but it's best to have some leftover than to have to remeasure this again. So here's the yarn here, make a slip knot and now insert both needles through this loop. This yarn is the one which is measured and this is coming from the skein. Insert your index finger and open the yarn. And now we're going to go from left to right and we're going to grab a loop like this. This is the long tail cast on method. And this is how we're going to continue until we have 64 stitches. So continue let's finish this part and then i'll come back and show you what we need to do next i finished casting on my stitches i have 64 now here i'm just going to tie a knot here at the end so that this last stitch here does not open too much there now carefully remove one of the needles like i said you can use straight needles i'm using these circular needles as straight needles there now to begin with the first row we're going to knit across, including the first stitch. So knit the first stitch. Knit the second stitch and every stitch across like this. Knit. Continue. Finish this first row. I'll meet you at the end. I'm here at the end of this first row. Now knit the last stitch. Turn for the second row. Now for the second row, we're going to repeat the same thing. Knit the first stitch, knit the next stitch, and repeat the same thing up to the end of this second row. Continue, finish this row. I'll come back and show you what we need to do next. I finished the second row. Now we're going to turn for the third row. For the third row, we're going to just knit across. Same thing we did in the second row, like this. So continue, finish this third row where you just knit across. I'll come back and show you what we need to do next. I finished the third row. That's where we knit across. Now we're going to turn for the fourth row. Now, this is a unisex pattern. If you want to be precise, you can make the buttonholes at the end of the row for girls and at the beginning for boys. Like I said, it's a unisex pattern, so I'm just going to be adding my buttonholes here at the beginning of the row. So here to begin in the fourth row, I'm going to knit three one two three now to make the buttonhole you're going to yarn over knit two together
and knit one. Now here I'm going to place a stitch marker. These six stitches here, this is going to be our button band. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to knit across up to the last six stitches and then I'm going to place a stitch marker and then knit the last six stitches. So continue, finish this fourth row. I will meet you at the end. I'm here at the end of the fourth row. I have the last six stitches here. I'm going to place a stitch marker. Now knit six to finish the row. At the end of this row, I'm going to be left with 64 stitches. At the beginning of the row, we added our first buttonhole. Now turn for the fifth row. In the fifth row, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to knit five. One, two, three, four, five. Now the sixth stitch, when we're on the wrong side, you are always going to slip purl wise, pass your stitch marker, and then knit across. I will meet you right here six stitches before we finish to show you how we're going to finish this fifth row. I'm here at the end of the fifth row. Now pass your stitch marker. I have the last six stitches here. The stitch before the stitch marker, which is this next stitch, bring the yarn to the front, slip the stitch purlwise. Now knit the next stitch. Then I have the yarn over that I did at the beginning of the row. I'm going to be adding small buttons, so I'm going to knit this yarn over through the back like this. That way the hole is not too big. If you want to use bigger buttons, then you can knit through the front. And now just knit three. And here is the fifth row. At the end of this row, we haven't done any increases. You should still have 64 stitches. Now we're going to turn for the sixth row. In the sixth row, we're now going to begin our raglan increases. So before we continue, I need you to place some stitch markers. Here I have the first stitch marker. This is for the button band, I have six stitches, then you're going to count two, four, six, eight, place a stitch marker, one stitch, place a stitch marker. Now for the shoulder here, we have two, four, six, eight, place a stitch marker, one stitch, place a stitch marker. For the back side, I have 16. I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, place a stitch marker, then I have one stitch, place a stitch marker. For the second sleeve or shoulder, I have eight, two, four, six, eight, place a stitch marker, one stitch, place a stitch marker, and then for the second front panel, I have eight, and then I have the stitch marker, and then here are the six stitches for the front panels. Now, or the button band. Now, to begin the sixth row, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to knit across here I'm going to knit six plus eight so to begin knit the first stitch that's one two three four five six pass your stitch marker and now I'm going to knit the next eight stitches one two three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here I have the first stitch marker. Here I'm going to yarn over. Then I'm going to pass the stitch marker. I'm going to knit the center stitch, pass the stitch marker, and yarn over. Now I'm going to knit the next eight stitches. One, Eight. Here we have the next two stitch markers. Yarn over, pass your stitch marker, knit the center stitch, pass your stitch marker, and yarn over. Now for the back side, I'm going to knit 16. 
one, two, sixteen. Yarn over, pass your stitch marker, knit the center stitch that's between the two stitch markers, pass your stitch marker, yarn over, and now knit eight. One, eight. And here we have the last stitch markers, yarn over, pass your stitch marker, knit the center stitch, pass your stitch marker, yarn over and knit eight. One, eight. Pass your stitch marker, knit six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here is row six. Now at the end of this sixth row, you should have a total of 72 stitches. We have increased eight stitches. We have two, four, six, eight yarn overs, which are the increases. So you should have 72 stitches at the end of the sixth row. Now for the seventh row, we're going to turn in this row. When you're on the wrong side, you're going to knit five, one, two, three, four, five. Now the stitch that's before the stitch marker, that's part of these six. So the sixth stitch, you're going to slip purl wise, pass your stitch marker, and we're going to knit up to the first yarn over here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have the first yarn over. I'm going to knit the yarn over like this, pass the stitch marker. I'm going to slip the center stitch, pass my stitch marker, and knit the second yarn over like this. The important thing here is that you, when you're on the wrong side, you're going to slip this stitch that's before the stitch marker for the button band, and you're always going to slip purlwise the stitches that are in between the two stitch markers. And this is going to create this beautiful raglan so that it looks like this. So this is done by slipping the first stitch so that it looks like this. So when you're on the wrong side, you slip the stitch. When you're on the right side, you knit the stitch. And same thing for the button band. This is what we're trying to create here, a separation between the button band and the rest of the body of the sweater. So again, I'm going to show you one more time here. This is the wrong side, so this is the seventh row. So odd number of stitches are on the wrong side. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have the next yarn over, knit the yarn over, pass your stitch marker, bring the yarn here to the back and slip purlwise the center stitch, pass your stitch marker and knit the second yarn over. Again, knit one, two, Sixteen. Here's the yarn over, knit, pass the stitch marker, bring the yarn to the back and slip the stitch in the center purlwise, pass your stitch marker, bring the yarn to the front again and knit the yarn over. Again, one, two, eight. 
eight, here's the yarn over, knit past the stitch marker, bring the yarn to the back, slip the center stitch purl wise, pass your stitch marker, bring your yarn to the front, knit the next yarn over, and then knit one, two, eight, pass your stitch marker, we have the last six stitches, the stitch before the stitch marker, which is this next stitch, bring the yarn to the front, slip the stitch purl wise, and knit the last five stitches. And here is the seventh row. At the end of this row, you should also have 72 stitches. Now we're going to turn for the eighth row. I'm going to place a stitch marker, that way you don't get confused on which side you're going to make your increases. Whenever you see a stitch marker here at the beginning, that means that in this row you're going to make your increases. So here for the eighth row, you're going to knit six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Pass your stitch marker, and here now I have nine stitches. Two, four, six, eight, nine. I'm going to knit nine. One, nine. Yarn over, pass your stitch marker, knit the center stitch, pass your stitch marker, yarn over, and then knit one, ten. Yarn over, pass your stitch marker, knit the center stitch, pass your stitch marker, and yarn over. And now you're just going to continue and knit the next set of stitches. Before the stitch marker, you yarn over, pass your stitch marker, knit the center stitch, pass your stitch marker, yarn over, and then knit these next stitches, and repeat the same thing for this last set of stitch markers. Before the stitch marker, you're going to yarn over, pass your stitch marker, knit the center stitch, pass your stitch marker, yarn over, and then knit the last set of stitches for the front panel, pass your stitch marker, and knit the last six stitches. I will meet you at the end of this eighth row. I finished the eighth row. Here at the end, I knit the last six stitches. I have a total of 80 stitches at the end of this row because we have increased eight more stitches. Two, four, six, eight. Now turn for the ninth row. Now for this ninth row, I'm going to knit five. One, two, three, four, five. Here's that stitch before the stitch marker. Remember, when you're on the wrong side, this sixth stitch, you always slip purl-wise. Make sure that yarn here is behind that stitch. Pass your stitch marker, and now we're going to knit up to the first yarn over. That's one, Here's the yarn over, so 10. Now pass your stitch marker, bring the yarn to the back and slip the center stitch purl wise. Pass the stitch marker, bring the yarn to the front and knit the second yarn over. And that's all you're going to do for this ninth row. The important thing is for you to remember to knit the yarn over pass your stitch marker, slip the center stitch purlwise, pass your stitch marker, and then knit the second yarn over. And that's how you're going to work each one of the increases that we did in the previous row up to the last six stitches. I will meet you here at the end to show you how we're going to finish this ninth row. I'm here at the end of the ninth row. I have the last six stitches. I'm going to pass my stitch marker and remember the stitch before the stitch marker or after in this case, since we're on the wrong side, you are going to slip purl wise, bring the yarn back to the front and knit the last five stitches. 
and here's the ninth row at the end of this row you should have 80 stitches as well now we're going to turn now for the 10th row we're going to increase we're on the right side we have the stitch marker here so here I'm going to knit six Pass your stitch marker now here I'm going to knit up to the first stitch marker so that's one ten now this is what you're going to do before the first stitch marker you're going to yarn over and you can clearly see here the center stitch pass your stitch marker knit the center stitch Pass your stitch marker and yarn over. Now knit the next section of stitches, so that's two. Twelve. We have a stitch marker, so you yarn over, pass your stitch marker, knit the center stitch, pass your stitch marker, yarn over, and then knit the next section. That's how you're going to repeat the same thing for these last two set of stitch markers continue finish this 10th row I will meet you at the end I'm here at the end of the 10th row in this row we have increased so I have a total of 88 stitches at the end of this row two four six eight now we're going to turn for the 11th row now for the 11th row here we're going to knit five one, two, three, four, five. We have the stitch before the stitch marker. Bring the yarn to the back, slip the six stitch purlwise, bring the yarn to the front again, pass your stitch marker, and knit up to the first yarn over. So that's one. Ten. Here's the yarn over that's 11 pass your stitch marker bring the yarn to the back slip the center stitch purl wise pass your stitch marker bring the yarn to the front and knit the second yarn over now knit the next section of stitches one two Twelve. Here's the yarn over. Knit the yarn over. Pass your stitch marker. Bring the yarn to the back. Slip the center stitch purlwise. Pass your stitch marker. Bring the yarn to the front and knit the second yarn over. And that's how you're going to continue for this eleventh row. I will meet you here at the end to once again show you how you're going to work this stitch after the stitch marker. I'm here at the end of the 11th row. Now pass your stitch marker, have the last six stitches. Remember, the stitch before the stitch marker here at the end, you slip purlwise with the yarn here in the back, bring the yarn back to the front and knit the last five stitches. Always, always, when you're on the wrong side, you always do this with the stitch that's before or after the stitch marker and the stitches that are in between the stitch markers. Now turn for the 12th row. I'm going to show you one more time how you're going to continue for the rest of the yoke here. So we're on the right side. This is an increased row, so knit six. That's one, two, three, four, five, six pass your stitch marker i'm going to knit up to the first stitch marker so that's one eleven we have the stitch marker next so you're going to yarn over pass your stitch marker knit the center stitch when you're on the right side, you knit the center stitch. When you're on the wrong side, you slip purlwise. Now pass your stitch marker, yarn over, and then knit the next section of stitches. One, two, four, 
14. We have the stitch marker, yarn over, pass your stitch marker, knit the center stitch, pass your stitch marker, yarn over, and continue and knit the next section until you finish this 12th row. Now, this is how we're going to continue for the rest here. We're just going to repeat these two rows that I just showed you here. The important thing here is that when you're on the right side, which is where we have the stitch marker and where we have the buttonhole here on this side, you make your increases. You make your increases before the stitch marker, pass your stitch marker, knit the center stitch, pass your stitch marker, and yarn over. When I say increases, I mean the yarn overs. Those are the increases. As you can see here, you see the little holes. And as this part here grows, this is how it's going to look. This is the right side and here's the wrong side. So that's what we want to do here with the yoke. It's very easy. I have shown you a couple rows or a total of 12 rows now of how you're going to do this part here. So that's how you're going to continue. I'm not sure how many rows I'm going to do from here on, but continue watching. I will let you know exactly how many rows I'm going to do. Keep track of your rows. Um, once I finish this part, I'll come back and show you how it looks, and I'm going to tell you how many rows I have done here, and I'm also going to tell you um, on which rows I have done my buttonhole, so that way you uh, do the same thing. So continue, make sure that you always increase on the right side exactly how I showed you here. And when you're on the wrong side, make sure that you slip these stitches here, which is the stitch before the stitch marker here for the front panels and the stitches in between the stitch markers. Make sure you slip those stitches purlwise. And that's how you're going to continue just repeating these two rows. Now continue watching, like I said, I will let you know exactly how many rows I'm going to do and I'm going to tell you on which row you need to do the buttonholes. I finished the yoke. I did a total of 37 rows. At the end of row 37, I have 192 stitches. Now this part here is measuring right across. It's measuring about 10.5 centimeters, which is a little bit over four inches. And I have added three buttonholes so far. So what we're going to do in the next row is we're going to to work this from panel and then I'm going to work the first sleeve. After I finish the first sleeve, I'm going to continue with the back side and then work on the second sleeve and then finish this second front panel. So this row here is going to be a long one. So let's get started here. For the front panels, I'm going to leave, let's see, 30 stitches. For each one of the sleeves, I'm going to leave 42 stitches. And for the back side, I'm going to leave 48 stitches. For the second sleeve, again, 42 stitches. And for the second front panel, 30 stitches. So let's get started here. This is going to be row one. And we're going to, because my yarn here um, is variegated, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some color control here. So this is how much yarn I have of the gray. So what I did here is I cut all of the gray. So for the sleeves, I'm going to make it in the next color, which is um, this off-white. And I'm probably going to use all of it and then get a little bit of the pink in there too for the sleeve. So I am going to be doing some color control. So that way both sleeves match. And then for the body, um, I'll continue with this yarn, which is what I have left over of the color here for the um, yoke. So let's get started here. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to knit, let's see, 30 stitches. Let's see. These are our button band stitches. So I'm just going to knit these six stitches and I am going to continue with this here where I knit that stitch when I'm on the right side but when I'm on the wrong side I slip. So now I am going to knit across these stitches. Let's see. I knit these six for the button band so now I'm going to knit one, two, Twenty-four plus six, I have 30 stitches. Now remove this stitch marker. I'm going to 
leave these stitches here pending along with the yarn and for the next 42 stitches which are from here up to this other stitch I'm going to have 42 stitches so I told you I cut my yarn already and I'm going to leave that along with my needles and I'm going to use these straight needles these are three millimeters as well so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attach the new color um, like I said I am doing this with some color controlling so that my sleeves match so here I'm going to knit the stitch here remove the stitch marker and I'm going to knit across to the other center stitch here. That's two. Forty-one, forty-two. So these here are going to be for the sleeve. Forty-two stitches for the sleeve. And now we're going to turn. And with my other needle here, I'm going to continue and just knit these forty-two stitches. And I'm going to knit every stitch across, including the first one. turn and repeat the same thing we are only knitting these 42 stitches and this here is for the first sleeve and again I am doing some color control here so that my sleeves match so you will need at least two skeins because I don't think I'm going to have enough to make the sleeves using this one color here or this one section of this color in the skein so continue now just knit the sleeves I'm not sure how many rows I'm going to do here for the first sleeve but continue watching I will let you know exactly how many rows I'm going to do so I'm going to place a stitch marker here to mark the first row and then I'll tell you how many stitches and then I'll tell you how many rows I'm going to do so continue just knit across every row every stitch and I will meet you at the end of that row I'm almost done with the sleeve I have done a total of 52 rows I have 26 rows in this off-white color and 26 rows in the pink so now for the cuff what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to this lighter um, pink color and I'm going to make the cuff in this color like I said at the beginning I am doing some color control here so um, that's how I'm keeping the colors the same especially for the sleeves so here I'm going to now knit the first stitch and then I'm going to purl the next stitch here I'm starting the cuff so knit one purl one so knit purl knit purl knit purl and this is how I'm going to continue all the way to the end Here's the last stitch I'm going to purl. Now turn here. Now 
Now for the second row, I'm going to slip this stitch and I'm going to purl the next. So knit, purl, knit, purl. And I'm going to do this all the way to the end of this second row here for the cuff. And then I'm going to repeat the same thing. So let me finish this second row here. We're just working these stitches exactly how they are. If it's a purl, then you purl. If it's a knit, then you knit. And here is the last stitch. This last stitch, I'm going to purl. There. Now turn for the third row and repeat the same thing. Okay, here I'm going to slip the first stitch and then purl the next. Oops. and knit the next purl one knit one and so on now continue like this for the cuff so far we have done three rows this is the third row so continue i'm not sure how many rows i'm going to do here but continue watching i will let you know exactly how many rows so i will meet you at the end of that row i'm done with the cuff i did a total of eight rows so now in row nine i'm going to cast off our stitches so here slip the first stitch and then purl the next stitch now bring the first stitch that you slipped over the second now the next stitch you're going to knit and bring the first stitch over the second purl the next stitch and bring the first stitch over the second and this is how we're going to cast off our stitches so you knit the next bring the first stitch over the second Purl the next, bring the stitch that you had on the needles over the next stitch and so on. Continue, let's finish this row and then I'll come back and show you what we need to do next. I finished casting off my stitches, here's the last stitch. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my yarn and I'm going to leave a nice long tail because uh, we're going to seam the sleeve. You can do it now or you can do it after we're done, that would be up to you. I'm just going to do it after. So I'm going to, I don't know, leave some yarn here, about that much, we don't need to, to leave this too long. So just leave a nice long tail and then just pass your yarn through this last loop and then I'm going to come back and show you how we're going to seam the, the sleeves after we're done with everything. So in total, I did 26 rows here, plus 26 rows in this other pink. That's 52 rows, plus eight rows here for the cuff. And then on the ninth row, we cast off our stitches. So the sleeve is done and this is how it looks from here up to here right now as it is it's measuring about 16 centimeters which is about 6.25 inches so for the size that we're making this for it's perfect um so we're going to do the exact same thing for the second sleeve so now what we're going to do is we're going to continue here make sure that you're on the right side and you can see that we're on the right side because you can see this nice chain here that was formed um, when we were making the yoke so i'm going to continue with this yarn here the the gray color that that i left before i started the sleeves Here so far we have done the stitches for the first from panel, uh, which is 30 stitches here. So now under the sleeves, I'm going to add five more stitches. So we're going to do this. That's two, three, four, five. I'm adding five extra stitches. Now we're going to continue and knit the stitches for the back side. For the back side, we have 48. So knit, knit, knit. So here, just knit across 
these 48 stitches I will meet you right here and then we're going to work on the second sleeve okay I knit the stitches for the back side I knit 48 so now I'm going to just remove these stitch markers and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave the needles here along with this yarn and I'm going to do the same thing I did with the first sleeve I'm going to continue with this white or the off-white yarn and knit 26 rows for the sleeve so here I'm going to start you off with these straight needles these are the same size they're three millimeter I'm going to knit the first stitch here for the sleeve and the main needle along with the gray yarn I'm going to leave it there so that we can continue with the second front panel. So here's the first stitch. Remove that stitch marker and knit across. That's two, three, Forty one, forty two. There we have forty two stitches here for the second sleeve. I'm going to turn here, and again, I'm just going to leave this needle here waiting until we're ready to finish the second front panel. So, here I'm just going to continue and knit twenty six rows with this color, or a total of fifty two rows. Um, for the first sleeve, how I did it is I did 26 rows here with this off-white color, then I did 26 rows with the pink, and then I did 8 rows of knit one, purl one for the cuff, and then cast off with the third color, which is the light pink. So continue and finish the second sleeve. It's done exactly in the same way how I showed you with the first, a total of 52 rows plus eight rows of knit one purl one and then cast off on the ninth row for the cuff so finish and I'll come back and show you what we need to do next I finished making the second sleeve I did it exactly in the same way how I showed you with the first one in this color I did 26 rows and then 26 rows with the pink and here for the cuff I did eight rows and then on the ninth row I cast off my stitches then I left a long tail just like I did with the first sleeve so that we can seam this once the sweater is done so now we're going to continue with the first row so just to um, go over what we have done so far we did this front panel here I knit a total of 30 stitches then I knit 42 stitches for the sleeve and once we finish with the first sleeve I added an extra five stitches here under the sleeve and then continue with the back side for the back side I knit 48 stitches and then I knit 42 for the second sleeve I finished the second sleeve so now we're going to continue here by adding five stitches and then we're going to finish the second front panel and that will complete the first row so here I'm going to pick up this yarn here that I left as I told you for the sleeves I did some color control so that's why my sleeves match um, so you can do the same thing to continue I'm going to add five stitches that's one two three four five now we're going to continue and knit these 30 stitches for the second front panel and all you do is just knit across that's two three Twenty nine, thirty. Now this completes the first row where we have knit the sleeves 
we knit the front panels and the back side and under each sleeve we added five extra stitches so at the end of this first row you should have a total of 118 stitches we have 30 plus 30 we have 48 stitches for the back side and then we have five stitches under each sleeve so that equals 118 stitches at the end of this first row now we're going to turn this is the wrong side so here all i'm going to do is just knit these five stitches one two three four five and the sixth one remember we slip and pass your stitch marker and then just knit across up to the last six stitches here under the sleeves i'm going to show you how you're going to knit the extra five stitches that we added and then you're going to complete the second row okay so here are the extra five stitches all you do is just knit like you normally would four and five and then continue and knit the stitches for the back side and then do the same thing under the other sleeve and then finish the stitches here for the second front panel i will meet you at the end of this second row i'm here at the end of the second row this is the wrong side i have the last six stitches so i'm going to pass my stitch marker remember this stitch here on this side we slip so that this nice chain here remains and then knit five there here's the second row I have a total of 118 stitches from here on all we're going to do is just knit the rest of the little sweater and it's easy all you do is just knit across for this row and all the rows when you're on the right side this is the right side um, keep track of your rows so that way you can continue and add your buttonholes I have so far three so I'm going to continue and add them and I'll let you know on which rows I do mine I already told you at the beginning how many rows I'm leaving in between the buttonholes so I'm going to continue in the same way so this is all we're going to do here just knit across and then on the wrong side remember to knit five and then slip the sixth stitch then knit across up to the last six stitches and slip that next stitch and knit five at the end so this is how we're going to continue now we're always going to have 118 stitches at the end of each row i'm not sure how many rows i'm going to do here but continue watching i will let you know exactly how many rows i'm going to do so continue like this i'm almost done with the body of the sweater so far from here up to here i have a total of 38 rows if i count all the rows i have a total of 97 rows i'm about to start row 98 and i have done a total of let's see two four six buttonholes and i'm going to add one more so i'm going to have a total of seven buttonholes so so far i have added buttons on row 4 20 36 52 68 and 84 on row 100 i'm going to go ahead and add the seventh buttonhole so now what i'm going to do here is the hem and i'm going to do it exactly like this so we're going to start here so to do this oh the measurement from here up to here it's measuring about 15 centimeters which is almost six inches so we're going to now continue here with row 98 and i'm going to keep this part here the same so i'm just going to knit these six stitches now i am on the right side right now now to make the hem i'm going to purl one knit one purl one knit one 
purl and knit and I'm going to do this up to the last six stitches like I said I'm going to keep these stitches here for the front panels exactly the same I'm just going to work the stitches in between so I'm going to meet you right here six stitches before we finish for this first row here for the hem to show you how we're going to finish this row okay I have knit and purled now I have the last six stitches here for row 98 so I'm going to knit six here at the end now turn and we're going to knit five for row 99 slip one pass your stitch marker and then here we have our stitches this stitch here I knit and then I knit the last six stitches so this here I am going to now purl and I'm going to knit the next purl knit purl and knit and that's all I'm going to do for this row 99 or the second row here of the hem I'm not sure how many rows I'm going to do but you're just going to repeat this row I'm going to add my last buttonhole in the next row and then I'm going to do a couple more rows I'm not sure like I said but continue watching I will let you know exactly how many rows I'm going to do and basically you're just doing the same thing you if you see a knit stitch then you knit if you see a purl stitch a purl stitch has this little bump then you purl up to the last six stitches for this row so up to these last six stitches you're going to pass your stitch marker slip this stitch and then knit five turn and then for me i'm going to add my last buttonhole and then i'm going to do the same thing for the stitches in between the front panels continue watching I will let you know exactly how many rows I'm going to do here for the hem so continue and I'll meet you at the end of that row I finished making the bottom part here of the sweater I did a total of eight rows where I knit one purl one this part here of the front panels remains the same so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast off my stitches and um, here as I told you I did my seventh buttonhole so to cast off our stitches we're going to knit two here at the beginning now bring the first stitch over the second knit the next bring the first stitch over the second and so on there remove your stitch marker and then continue this here is a purl stitch so I'm going to purl and then I'm going to bring this first stitch over the next stitch is a knit so I'm going to knit that stitch and bring the first stitch over so purl the next bring this stitch over the first knit the next and bring the first stitch over this is how we're going to cast off our stitches so continue finish this last row and then I'll come back and show you what we need to do next I finished casting off my stitches here's my last stitch now here at the end I've cut my yarn what I'm going to do is with a crochet hook I'm going to go right here to make this last stitch here a bit smaller so I'm just going to work a slip stitch here where I pass my yarn through this last loop and then all I need to do here is just hide this end so just go through that same stitch there and now as you can see this opening is smaller all I need to do now is just hide my ends I'm going to do it here along the very edge I'm going to make a small knot here perfect and then just do a couple more so this part here is done and this is how it looks so this little sweater is almost done this is how it looks I have my seven buttonholes 
So now I'm going to show you how we're going to seam this leaf. So we're going to go here to this side. Again, this is the right side and this is the wrong side, the inside of the sweater. So we're going to do this from the right side out. So here's the yarn that I left and with a yarn needle here, I'm going to seam the sleeves. Now you can knit the sleeves in the round. Um, I would probably just continue and do the body and then do the sleeves after. Um, it'll be a lot easier if you knit the sleeves last when you do it in the round. So here's the last stitch. I'm going to go here to the very first stitch on this other side and we're going to join this part together like this. Now there is no right or wrong way of doing this. This is how I'm going to do it. So right along the very edge we have this stitch that runs along the very edge. So we're going to go stitch by stitch and row by row. Make sure that your rows correspond. That way you don't have leftover stitches here when you finish. So find the next row and then find the next row here and do the same thing. Next stitch and the next. There. there. So this part here is done. This is how it looks. You can pull a little bit and that's going to close. There, that looks fine. And now we're going to continue here. Now this part here is easier because we have, you see this little bump here along the very edge, that's where I'm going to be inserting my needle. And on this other side, I'm going to do the same thing. So starting on this side, find that first bump for that row and then find the first one here on this side. Make sure that your rows correspond and then do the next row and the next row here on this side. The next row and the next row and so on. The important thing here is that your rows correspond so that it looks like this continue I will meet you right here at the end to show you how we're going to join the stitches that we did here under the sleeves with the rest of the sleeve I finished joining my sleeve this is how it looks make sure that you give it a nice tug here so that this part here is nice and straight so now what we're going to do here is I think that pink is not the best of color here to close this part here because you might be able to see so if you want you can just reinforce a stitch here cut this and then use the gray to do this last part but I'm going to continue and see how this looks um, as you can see my rows correspond so my last stitches here were this last row here in white so now I have the next row which is this row in gray so what I'm going to do here is we have this gray row right there. So go on this side and we have the row that corresponds on the opposite side. So go into that stitch and now we are joined up to the gray row. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to join this side here of the raglan and the opposite side here, this part, and we're going to go through this like this make sure you pull this there that looks pretty good and now we're going to put the needle through the inside and I'm going to tie a knot right here This is so that this part now looks like this. You can barely see it. This is how it looks. So it looks like a continuous chain all around the sleeve. So now we have this part here. So what I'm going to do here 
is I'm going to go right here, right in the center. Here we added five extra stitches, so right in the center, right there. Insert your needle, and we're going to join to the center stitch. I am okay with having a gap here because it matches these holes here on this side and on this side. If you don't want a hole here, then go ahead and just join somehow with another stitch or, or two, this side and then this side. I am perfectly okay with how this looks now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reinforce this last stitch. I'm going to give it another little stitch there, but for the most part, it's done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and hide all my ends, and then I'll come back and show you the finished little sweater, and I'll give you the final measurements then. I finished making my little sweater. I went ahead and finished seaming the sleeves. I showed you this side. This is how it looks, and then I did the same thing here on this side. And that's how it looks. So this little sweater is all done. Look how beautiful it looks. I also went ahead and attached my buttons. I used seven buttons and these are 12 millimeter size buttons. I used seven. Now let me give you the finished measurement. From the top of the neckline to the end of the sleeve, it's measuring about 27 centimeters, which is about 10.5 inches. From under the sleeve to the end of the sleeve, it's measuring about 16 centimeters, which is about 6.25 inches. Now this measurement here, right across from here to here, it's measuring about 11.5 centimeters, which is about 4.5 inches. The total length from the top of the neckline to the end here of the last row, it's measuring about 28 centimeters, which is about 11 inches. Now the chest measurement, just the top, it's measuring about 24 centimeters, which is about 9.5 inches. So based on these measurements, this little sweater is for baby boys and girls between three and six months old. Now you can easily make it smaller or bigger from zero to three months and up to nine to 12 months. In the information box below, I'll go ahead and leave you some information on how you can easily make it smaller or bigger so be sure to check that out. So here's the little cardigan sweater all finished. This is how it looks. Now you're going to need a total of about 140 grams. As I told you in the beginning, I did some color controlling here where I just took the skein apart and just separated the colors so that I can have even colors all around, especially for the sleeves because they are worked first. So here's the little cardigan. It's all done. So this was today's tutorial. I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.